There's no one that I've ever talked to that has convinced me that Eric B. Enemy is some great offensive mind who's bringing a boatload of value to the table for Patrick Mahomes or that offense. And that's why I think Patrick Mahomes is stagnant. You get uh, someone that talented, you, you surround him with the best people at every turn. At every, you know, the quarterback's coach, the head coach, and the offensive coordinator, they're all bringing something to the table for the, for, for the quarterback. I don't think that's the case in Kansas City. People, we're about to get into this conversation this week because the NFL, I think, has hired four <laughs> new coaches so far. Yeah. Uh, so far, that, and none of them are black, and we're going, oh, my God, how come Eric B. Enemy isn't getting a job, but it must be racism? Well, it, it might just be, as it relates to Eric B. Enemy, maybe he's just not that good. He's started to come out with all the social media over the last few years. There's no way he's going to allow that to be leaked to Adam Schefter when he, I don't know if you saw, towards the end of his career with the Patriots, like one at a time, he started an Instagram and then he started a Twitter and then he started a Facebook and then he started releasing videos. You know, he actually likes interacting with the fans and having the ability, you know, he started doing the man in the arena stuff. He wants to connect with people. So I bet he's really, really pissed that that leaked out. I think there's a chance that he would have been considering retiring and would now go the other direction just because he didn't get to go out on his own terms. Seriously, I, I think he's that competitive. I, I, I believe that. That's one thing. The second thing is I think Tom Brady, more than most anybody that I have seen, cares about his legacy. He cares about how he goes about his business, how he's viewed. He doesn't want to go out like Peyton Manning, where his arm was falling off and they won the Super Bowl anyway. In 2015, Peyton Manning couldn't throw the ball seven yards, and they ended up winning the Super Bowl because they had an unbelievable defense. Tom does not want that. I'm going to be very serious with you. That play right before halftime that you talked about in your opening monologue, right before the halftime yeah. uh, from the one or the two-yard line, do you, the Seattle Seahawks, from the two-yard line? Marshawn Lynch, yeah. Marshawn Lynch from the Super Bowl, I mean, from at the Super Bowl, and you didn't get in? Yeah. That changed the Legion of Boom forever. That play yesterday, Jason, will change the future of the Kansas City Chiefs forever because that's going to be a riff that went down in that Chiefs locker room. That's going to be a riff that Andy Reid and Eric Dumimini <laughs> can't replace, man. <laughs> Honestly. We were always taught to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Or I would hear people say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You take what you need to take from it and leave the rest. And if you can't do that, that's not you. I shouldn't be censored because somebody else doesn't have the ability to filter through to see what's real and what's not. And that's what they're trying to do. They do think that we're stupid and we have the inability to do that. And black people fall right into line when they say things like, oh, it's racist and we should just get rid of it all. No, eat the meat and spit out the bones. You should be old enough now to be able to do that. If you can't, that's something wrong with you. It's a personal problem. This is about Joe Rogan having bucked the establishment, okay, having gone against the establishment and on many occasions caught them with their pants down. First, it was with Alex Jones. Then more recently with this entire Iver Ivermectin scandal that they pulled, uh, you know, the, the, a couple months ago. And most recently with Spotify and, and the, the whole fight with Neil Young um, that he won. Right. So so Joe Rogan has taken the establishment to the mat and he's winning, you know, more times than not. And, and honestly, this is what we're going to continue to see now. We're going to continue to see an establishment try and go back in people's past, find a smoking gun of racism claim that they're doing it on behalf of black people when really they just want to hang it over somebody like Joe Rogan and Spotify's head to get them to bow at the altar of intersectionality in the church of LGBTQ. If you got the surfing turf, I'd literally, oh, hold on, let me. Wait a minute, Jason, can we finish this? Uh, <laughs> here it is, here it is, this is it right here. That's the surfing turf? Sur well, I mean, that, that's my surfing turf, but don't touch it. Come on, man. Keep on with the segment. What was we talking about? Oh, my God. Jason, will you keep on what we was talking about? St Lord you messing no this mercy. whole segment up. You, we supposed to be... Jason, come on, man. What was you saying, bro? Come on. Oh. Listen, remember you said it's been August 7th. Jason, put it down. 
Step, Jake. Jason, come on, man. You better, Jason, you better than this, man. Tiffany! <laughs> Tiffany! Jason, come on. Jason, don't, don't do it, man. Don't, don't trade places for what I've been through, Mr. Seeley. <laughs> Go ahead, Woo. No. Jason, will you? Oh, the double cheeseburger. <sighs> Jason, come on, man. You're doing too much, man. <laughs> when it came time for his head coach, he didn't choose a black head coach. He chose a white one. And that's part of the reason why he's now suing the NFL and now portraying himself as Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass, all this other crap. These guys need to sit on a therapist's couch talk to their mama, talk to their daddy, talk to their wives about whatever hangups they have about the decisions they've made in their personal life and quit trying to work them out on NFL football fields. This is Colin Kaepernick 2.0 2AT. Cause Colin Kaepernick, he ain't got Betty Shabazz either. Whatever went on between Brian Flores and Steven Ross and wanting to tank games and the guy offering you $100,000 a game for losing or whatever, a lot, a lot of people call that snitching. And, and we're all good with this kind of snitching, I guess, because it potentially harms a white person. And so that's good snitching. We, we, Brian Flores does not look like a leader of men in any of this. And I know I have some very naive thoughts about football and about sports and how they can be used to bring us all together and promote racial harmony and all that stuff just sounds really stupid and naive now because everything now is highly politicized. But I just don't, I don't see how Brian Flores can, he's a snitch. Authenticity, I don't find him authentic. I give him a two in authenticity. Uh, again, he ain't comfortable with. I think you're missing it. I give him a 25. I give you a 25 for authenticity. How? Because he wants to go down like all of the great ones. He want to go down like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Tupac. You know what all three of them have in common? What? They're martyrs. And you know what else they all have in common? They're no longer employed with us. <laughs> That's the thing that all martyrs have in common. They're, they're, they're hard to employ. <laughs> Do you see any way that Stephen Ross survives this? Will he be the owner of the Dolphins a year from now? Yeah, he can survive. I mean, look, everybody's lawyering up. And um, if, if Brian Flores' witness is his best buddy, um, you know, it, it, that's what it comes down to, this corroborating evidence. W what is that? And, and, and you can't really know where this is going to go until you see that. Um, um, that said, does, does Steve Ross want to be an NFL owner anymore? He, he hasn't won a playoff game. They've been he, – he's, he's – it's been an embarrassment after embarrassment for him and, and the, really a community jewel like the Dolphins franchise. And he, his hand-picked success, successor, uh, Bruce Beal, has been approved by the league. Why don't we just hand off to him and, and, and go into the, the soft night while you can before the next embarrassment comes for the franchise. It's similar to me to what we're seeing with Joe Biden in the Supreme Court. He said, we're going to put a black woman on the Supreme Court, which got rid of 94% of the population. So you, you look and say, how then can I, as someone who is observing the situation, 
know that this is the very best person for the job. Now it's a little bit different because this is, this is not a mandate that you will hire a black coach, but the fact that you're even in the room in a situation that Brian Flores had to be is a bit embarrassing. He was so embarrassed that he filed a lawsuit. And so if I were one of these coaches that knew that I was the guy that had to meet the Rooney rule, I'd be incredibly embarrassed because in order to get there in the first place, you have to be incredibly qualified. But it reminds me of one of my favorite In Living Color skits played by one of the Wayan sisters. Remember Benita Butrell? She was the one that was always gossiping on her window, saying like, ah, baby, and she's, oh my God, I love this person, and under the breath, but between you and me, oh my God, she was a dick, <laughs> right? That's probably what you're gonna get with Brian Flores. Like, yeah, 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 we love Brian Flores. He's a leader of men, he was great, he said a great, between you and me, Jason, that man couldn't coach his way out of a paper bag. I mean, that, that's the reality of it. Because if you go back to the Colin Kaepernick thing way back in 2016, there were actually reports that his teammates, a lot of them black, they weren't feeling him. Really, I remember Michael Silver coming out flat out saying, yeah, he's not a popular guy. All of a sudden now he was the Messiah leading all of the players. So what, what you're going to have is this revisionist history because nobody, and I hate this term, wants to be on the wrong side of history because we're just not allowed to be honest anymore. I think, uh, you know, in on planet Earth, right? I mean, people are going to get an unfair shake in certain situations. I mean, Brian Flores isn't the first person to go into a job interview drawing dead, right? I mean, that's just that's just the reality. And, you know, instead of just, you know, kind of sucking it up and going on to the next thing, just hitting the next button, you know, uh, too many people have just, you know, started to, to get on the path of, of racial resentment. And that's why, you know, I think this this whole situation, as it keeps blowing up, is kind of becoming into a, a Colin Kaepernick 2.0 situation. Because look, I, I think there are some similarities. I mean, Kaepernick, you know, he was, you know, he lost his starting job, not because of his race, it's because his performance started to drop off. And, you know, instead of, you know, trying to correct his own game, instead of looking in the mirror and saying, hey, what can I do better? You know, how can I improve myself as a quarterback and a teammate? Um, you know, an NFL player, you know, I, I'm just going to decide that there's some other reason uh, totally outside of my control, uh, and it has to be racism. I keep telling y'all about the African-American hookup. Angela Rye, another one of the mulatto. Uh, I, I'm, ESPN right now is running what I call the uh, ESPN, a.k.a. sorority. Angela Rye. Malika Andrews, uh, what, what's the other one? There's another one of the, the uh, L. Duncan, the brigade of light-skinned black women, the AKA Ski Wee. Do y'all, some of y'all, y'all don't know Ski Wee, AKA the sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha. You had to be half white to be an AKA back in the day, and it still goes on to this day. It's the, it's the super light-skinned, African-American uh, sorority. Somebody over at ESPN, one of these executives, they don't like Deltas, they don't like uh, Zeta Phi Betas, they like uh, the Red Bones. This dude set up here and everybody else caped up for Deshaun Watson early in Deshaun Watson's career when he was trying to get out, but we didn't know. We didn't know these allegations about it. We caped up for him, you know? And you sit up here, and this is what you was talking about Flores about. And this is my problem when we talking about this, this Ryan Clark. I mean, you do things, thinking about yourself, thinking about what you do. You don't think about the people that you affect afterwards. You don't think about the black people that you affect afterwards. Because this man hard down called for my job. Okay, but you know what? He want people to have have sympathy for him because he got sickle cell. Who else got sickle cell, Jason? Who else got sickle cell? Your son. My 12 year old son got sickle cell. But no, your ass want me to lose my job. Damn my family. Because of what you say, you call me a racist. Him calling me a racist is like when I was a cop and I stopped a black person for not having tags and excessive tinted windows. You only stop me because I'm black. You sound like a damn fool.